for our YouTube viewers, I want to and all of you here, I want to introduce Paolo to you. Paolo Guizardi, is that how you say your name, Paolo? Well, in Italian it's pronounced Guizardi, but Guizardi. Don't, don't worry. Okay, all right. So Paolo has a background in industrial electronics and he's worked for the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1993. And since 2004, he's translated documents of relevance for ufological research into Italian for publication on his website. Uh, he's been a member of the CUN, which is the Centro Ufologico Nazionale of Italy, since 2008, and has been responsible for the international relations of the centre. And Paolo has acted as interpreter at the international conferences organised by CUN in San Marino and Rome. Yeah. In 2021, he became an, the national representative of Italy for ISA, and the, which is the International Coalition for Extraterrestrial Research, which I've spoken to you about many times, and associate of uh, C, CIFAS, the Council of International Federation for Advanced Studies and member of the CIFAS think tank. So tonight, Paolo is joining us from Italy, uh, and he's going to be talking about uh, the Mussolini UFO crash, as well as Project Titan, which uh, has been making the rounds in the media. So um, I'm really looking forward to hearing this, Paolo. So please um, take it away and welcome to our meeting. Okay, <clears throat> thanks, Cheryl. Thank you for uh, having me here, and good uh, evening to all the members of UFO Research Queensland. So, uh, tonight we are going to speak about two items. One is from the past and one is from today. Right? Um, both are, uh, I mean, they are just two very different items two different, very different subjects, but in their own way, um, I think interesting. <clears throat> so let's start with the, um, a flashback <laughs> from the past, so to speak. That is the 90, 1933 case, the so-called Mussolini UFO. So let's start this this presentation now we have this 1933 this is mussolini and the ufo <clears throat> this is a little known story but one which has the potential capacity to rewrite the history of the ufo phenomenon and this is i mean not an exaggeration as we will see so let's go on it, this is the introduction. It's uh, an event that happened in Italy in June 1933. Then Italy's government was the fascist dictatorship of uh, Benito Mussolini. The, a mysterious craft lands or crashes in northern Italy, not far from the city of Milano or Milan. <clears throat> what follows is interesting. This presentation is mostly based on the book Luci nel cielo, that is Lights in the Sky, by Roberto Pinotti. So I assume that um, all of you know more or less the situation of uh, Italy in 1933, where it was run, it was already uh, 11 years, under the dictatorship of Mussolini. So uh, let's go on. So the context date is the exact date is June 13th, 1933, which was the 11th year of the fascist era. By the way, it at the time it was necessary, it was mandatory when you wrote down a date to indicate uh, using Roman characters the year of the fascist era. So, uh, as you can see here, 
this is a calendar of nine of uh, 1933 then it says anno 11ef which means 11th year of the fascist era that was necessary i mean to indicate in any for any date the location was the region of lombardia in northern italy close to this village of vergiate so this is the region of Lombardia, as you can see here. And the more uh, precise location is here. As you can see, it's northwest from Milano, around 40 kilometers, more or less, and not far from, um, from Switzerland, because you can see this is the boundary line. With, with with Switzerland with Switzerland here. So, so how do we know about this 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 event? So the information which is contained in this presentation comes from a series of documents from the thirties that were sent anonymously first to some Italian newspapers, which ignorated them basically and then to various ufologists. So um, it's important to point out that um, uh, these uh, um, sendings, these anonymous sendings, were many, uh, addressed to many different uh, receivers and contained quite a good amount of information, uh, related information, of course. As I said, the documents were sent in several dispatches around 99, 2000, uh, some in original and some in black and white or color photocopies. So um, a few of them were original, but not all of them. The sender, this anonymous sender, claimed to be the son of a person who was involved in the scientific research. This, we, this is, of the scientific research is a point that we will see later. So how do we know too? The material sent by this unknown sender includes many documents from the 30s, usually related, um, typically related to various ufological issues of that, uh, of that uh, year. In addition to the documents, the anonymous sender also provided a lot of information about pre previously unknown ufological aspects of this historical period, especially regarding the RS-33 cabinet. We will see this, this RS-33 cabinet a bit later. How do we know three? In all, many are the documents sent, as you can see. And these are not, not uh, this is not the totality of the documents because there, there, there is someone more which, uh, <coughs> sorry, which should have been sent, but uh, very likely um, remain in some archives of some local newspaper as long as, as today. Uh, I mean, this is not for sure, but it looks like that these are not all the documents that, that were sent. So, and uh, Cheryl, I want to say, if you have some, some question or something to note, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to, to intervene. Okay. So, again, uh, uh, let's go. How do we know for? The most important documents of the Vergiate UFO case are three telegrams, these three that you see here, a memorandum's introduction and the memorandum itself, two pages, as you can see. <coughs> uh, these are the three most important documents which relate uh, to the UFO crash. There are other uh, which do not relate specifically to the UFO crash, as we will see later. The first telegram is this one. The sender is the Stephanie News Agency, 
By the way, it was the official news and only news agency of the regime. So whatever Stephanie sent out, that <laughs> was the truth, so to speak. You know how it happens under dictatorship. Rating is confident, reservatissimo, which is, uh, I mean, again, sender is the Stephanie news agency. Priority Lampo is the highest priority, while the rating is, the classification is confidential, reservatissimo. The text, by personal order of the Duce, so of Mussolini, note the emphasis given to the word Duce, D space U space C space E, uh, by personal order of the Duce, absolute silence is ordered on the presumed landing of an unknown aircraft on national soil. The version to be published that circulated with today's dispatch is confirmed. Uh, I have sent, I have uh, introduced a note here saying that uh, this uh, would, in fact, be the second telegram of the series. The first one, uh, the first one, unfortunately, is not available. Uh, probably was lost, so we do not know exactly what the the content of the first telegram was. <coughs> In any case, so uh, the the text goes on: maximum penalties for offenders up to including appeal to the state, Supreme State Security Court. Please confirm received immediately. Sign is the director of the director general of special affairs of the Stephanie agency. So from here, you can see uh, that the matter was uh, deemed very important. So to be followed personally by Mussolini himself. And you can see that uh, ab uh, absolute silence is ordered on the whole story um, from the beginning. And, and that the, uh, again, that the matter is very serious because <clears throat> any offender who do not uh, comply to the orders uh, mentioned here, uh, can expect uh, a very harsh treatment, <laughs> so so to speak. So this is the first telegram, I mean, the first that we know. Then the second telegram, it is this one. The day time is June 33 at 16 hour. Then we have uh, the same priority, <clears throat> LAMPO, which is the maximum, same classification confidential, addressed to all offices of the Stephanie agency, of course. Note, do not make copies, no copia. Text, by superior order, the news disclosed in today Stephanie dispatch number 63 slash 3 slash 1.0 should be treated as follow. The above mentioned aircraft has been recognized as a meteor or said to be a meteor by the Brera Astronomical Observatory. Give the news the slightest graphic relevance. There is no need to rectify. Uh, sorry, I cannot see here. Well, minimize. Immediately confirm received. Again, signed Director of General, the uh, General Director of Special Affairs from the of the Stephanie Agency. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Again, so this is the second telegram where uh, it's uh, the order is given <clears throat> to treat the news as a natural phenomenon, specifically a meteor. Uh, and of course, this was uh, to be, um, to be uh, presented to the public as becoming by the Astronomical Observatory of Brera, 
which at the time was the most important uh, uh, observatory. So now with this second telegram, we see the misinformation at work, the disinformation at work, sorry. Then we have the third of the series. There it is. Again, sender Stephanie News Agency. The time is 13 June at 1707. Priority the highest, the classification confidential, <coughs> addressed to all offices of the Stephanie Agency. So the, these were internal, um, these, these telegrams were meant to be used by all offices, uh, or by all local offices of the Stephanie Agency, by the way. So note, do not make copies. Text, uh, again, by personal order of the Duce, it is ordered that the circulation of the news about the craft of no nature referred to in today's Stephanie dispatch at 7.30 a.m. This is the missing one. To be stopped immediately. It is ordered that any leads for newspaper newspapers carrying this news be recast immediately. Again, maximum penalties for offender uh, up to deferring to the um, Supreme State Security Court, confirmed re received immediately, signed um, General Director of Special Affairs of the Stephanie Agency. So now we, we with this third telegram, we see that by personal order of Mussolini, the circulation of the news about this, this landing of uh, uh, known craft or on Italian soil is to be stopped immediately. And even those newspapers which still have the leads, because at the time, you know, the, they, were, they were using the leads for printing on paper, the newspapers. So in case any, um, any uh, newspaper had still had um, the leads mentioning this news, they, these leads had to be recast immediately. So you can see, again, you can see how seriously this matter was taken into consideration. So an opportune clarification at this point. Aeronautics, aeronautics, yes, was held in high esteem by the Mussolini regime. And there were high levels of skill in Italy at the time. You can see here on the right, this, this uh, image is a uh, um, propaganda man, um, poster for uh, this um, transatlantic uh, aerial cruise, cruise, which went from Rome to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And of course, it was not the only one because there was another one which uh, uh, arrived in New York City, by the way. So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> as I said, among, <coughs> among the many outstanding events, one of the most important was Italo Balbo's flight to Brazil in 3031, which was quite a feat for, for the time. So if they talk about an unknown aircraft, it is because it was something truly mysterious. So uh, there, I mean, there was a lot of people in Italy at the time who had the capacity, the knowledge and the capacity to judge what kind of uh, craft that would have been. So again, if they talk, if they say unknown, it's be, it's because it was really something mysterious. The memorandum one. So the memo is ac accompanied by an introductory introductory note, which is this one. Uh, that uh, you can see that. Uh, the letter had by the Senate of the reign of Italy, because at the, at the time Italy was a reign. So the, the text is, Dear De Santi, we do not know who 
this 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 Mr. DeSanti was. Uh, I am sending you, as requested and agreed verbally, the note for your rule. Do not make copies. Do not even mention it to your deputy for any matter having to do with the RS33 office. Come to me first. I personally wrote these lines as not to expose them to the made up but feminine eye of my secretaries. Therefore, adjust accordingly. So we see that this memo uh, looks like it has to do with something really, how can I say, um, important but really delicate in, in every sense of the word. Memorandum two. So the memorandum is this, which is made up by two pages. Now, an important clarification. Although logically the two should be link, linked, that is the telegram, the three telegrams that we have set and the memorandum that we are seeing here, although these two should be linked, the text of the memo does not show a certain and direct link to the landing of the mystery aircraft. So, in the memo text, as we will see, there is no indication, clear indication, uh, explicit indication of uh, that of the uh, Vergiate crash. But when you read the text, it looks evident that there must be, uh, I mean, a connection. Let's see. So this is the first page. And this is the second page. Note that again, uh, note that this memo is typed on letterhead of the Senate of the Kingdom, Kingdom of Italy. So the text. Personal note, very confidential. First, this is a list of things to do. First, notify the mayor to order the immediate recovery of the aircraft. Three, order immediate arrest of all witnesses. Appoint a special section RS-33 of the OVRA present in each provincial capital or its subsection. By the way, the OVRA, O-V-R-A, was the political uh, police of the regime. Four, direct all reports with the utmost secrecy and precedence over all priorities to the Central Meteorological Office at La Sapienza University in Rome. <coughs> Exclusive relevance was the RS, <clears throat> RS33 office. So a note the, uh, the indication with the utmost secrecy and precedence over all priorities. The Sapienza, La Sapienza University was the main, uh, most important university in Rome, in Rome and in Italy, sorry. Five, to prevent ex officio the dissemination of uh, any, uh, sorry, the, the translation is not totally correct. It means prevent ex officio the, the, the dissemination of any news, particularly particularly in the press. Six, for the purposes of the previous point, it is necessary to publish from time to time very short articles in which the phenomenon is reported to its authentic and unique celestial, celestial nature. Meteor, shooting star, planet, luminous halo, iris, parallelium, uh, and so on. According to the former RS-33, blah, 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 previously transmitted to all prefectures of the kingdom by special dispatch. So again, it is, again, I, I want to point out this phrase. It is necessary to publish from time to time very short article in which the phenomenon is report to its unique uh, celestial nature. Then, seven, transmission of reports to the Air Force is subject to the prior favorable opinion of the RS-33 Office Authority, whose decisions are unappealable 
up to the highest hierarchy of the Duce, that is of Mussolini. Eight, strict as there must be strict exclusion of any other scientific body from the collection and examination of the reports available, including the Pontifical University. So only the Universita La Sapienza had to be uh, in, had to receive these uh, uh, reports. Uh, and even the Pontifical University, I mean the University of the Vatican, was to be excluded from, from this list. Nine, charge all expenses uh, related to this provision, blah, blah, blah. This is uh, something uh, accounting, concern, relating to accounting. And then this uh, here, the personal note, very confidential, ends. So you see, this is a list of action to be taken. Uh, there is no mention of the telegrams. There is no mention of the unknown aircraft, which should have uh, somehow landed. Uh, but in, in any case, it looks rather evident that there must be a connection with whatever it was that was mentioned in the in the three telegrams, as you can see. Then, so again, let's see the sequence of the events. We have the landing or crash of a mysterious aircraft. We have the immediate imposition of the highest, utmost secrecy. Then we have the intimidation and silencing, if not arrest, of witnesses. The, then we have the disinformation campaign. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have activation of high-level scientific investigations. Then what happened after the crash? According to the anonymous sender, after the accident, the remains of whatever it was were stored, I mean, I have written aircraft, but whatever it was, were stored in this shed of the CI Marchetti company, one of the most important aeronautical manufacturers of the time. This is the, 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 the picture of this facility. And it is interesting to note here that although all similar facilities in the area were heavily bombed, bombed by the Allies, this one was somehow dispensed with. According also to the anonymous sender, after the accident, a high-level scientific facility was set up, not, not facility, I would say structure, was set up to study what was recovered, which logically should have been recognized as a technological artifact. The name of this facility or um, structure was the RS-33 cabinet, where RS stands for Ricerche Speciali, or Special Studies. The distinguished scientist Guglielmo Marconi was appointed head of the structure, always according to what this anonymous sender wrote. Now, Gabinetto RS33. It goes almost without saying that investigate, investigative activities of this RS33 office took place in absolute secrecy. The documents also show a close connection of the office with the OVRA, the secret political office of the Mussolini regime. So let's see which elements are somehow ver verifiable. There is not that much actually, it must be said. So first, the memorandum, which was sent in original form, was subjected to forensic examination and was re recognized as an original document, document from the 30s. That uh, this um, forensic exam analysis was held in um, around the year 2000, more or less. 
than Office RS33. Somewhat like uh, Majestic 12, it was possible to find some minimal external historical reference, but really minimal, minimal. But it must be also said that no really serious research was ever done on this subject. So there is this necessity to 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 effect to make more research because even if this has ever existed, the some trace some trace must somehow be found, like it happened with uh, with the majestic twelve. Then verifiable elements. You see, this um, this is a covers. This is an image for a cover story by the Corriere della Sera, which was one was the most well. Actually, at the time, it was the most important um, magazine, and this magazine had a cover at a certain point in um, July thirty three, if I remember well, had this. Uh, published this this um, cover story about people struck by lightning in the area of Vergiate. So, I mean, uh, it's such a trivial element that makes you think that um, it must be must have been an element of the mis disinformation campaign. I mean, because normally these cover stories with dedicated images, full page images, were done for important events. I mean, uh, people struck by lightning, I mean, uh, with respect to the poor guys who were struck. I mean, it's not such an important element. So one um, asks, uh, why did they dedicate uh, such, a, such a, a, a resource for, to, to, to such a trivial element? So it really makes you think that there must have been some connection with this disinformation campaign. Then, uh, the origin of the postal um, sendings. Most of them came from the city of Forli or the surrounding area, which was the, Forli uh, was the hometown of the Stephanie agency's director. So this is something that, I mean, can be uh, indeed verified. But that's not all. The anonymous sender, as we said, also provided other ufological informations, information related to the historical period of the 30s. This is a 1933, uh, sorry, 1936 sighting over Venice. So again, we have the letterhead of the house, of the house of the uh, reign of Italy, not the Senate, but the House of the reign of Italy. You can see here in this sketch the, the profile of a um, craft, some kind of craft, uh, which had this general form, torpedo form, which was followed in formation, flight information with two Saturn-like objects. In a, now we have this modern rendering of this uh, of this formation overflying the Palazzo Ducale of Venice. Again, this is a modern ren rendering, but it is done very very well. It reproduces very well the what was mentioned in uh, in this uh, document here. What was sketched in this document. Oh, by the way, here you can see. A plane, of course, um, a fighter plane, which was, which was sent to intercept this this formation, and uh, let me see. Ah oh, no, and it is uh, funny because in uh, another document uh, of this series, it's it's uh, specified that um, two interceptors were launched 
but even at the speed of 130 kilometers per hour, they didn't manage to intercept the, the formation. L let us remember it was 1936. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go on. But this is not all too. There are other, info, as we have said, there are other information and documents provided by the anonymous sender, but space and time do not permit viewing them all. Those that we have seen in any case are the, by far the most important. Oh, does this by any chance remind you of anything? We have crash, we have secrecy, we have silencing, we have disinformation, and high-level secret, <clears throat> secret scientific research enacted. If it was not already evident, here we find in action all the ingredients of the recipe, so to speak, with which we are now familiar from the Roswell events. And all this, 14 years before Roswell, in a radic radically different context in pre-war fascist Italy. So that was 14 years before Roswell, and we see all the ingredients already at work. So moral of the story, the contemporary UFO era is conventionally considered to have begun in 1947, <coughs> sorry, with the Roswell and Arnold cases, which by the way, the Arnold, Arnold case was the first modern, that is heavily mediatized UFO case. This is why it is considered officially, officially the first UFO the first UFO case of the modern era of the phenomenon. We can reasonably state that the Roswell case was very likely not the first UFO crash case. Manifestations of the UFO phenomenon, at least in the form we know it today, date back to the beginning of the 20th century. The US play a very important role in the UFO phenomenon, but the phenomenon is not an exclusive of the United States of America. Well, that's really all, and good to know it was my pleasure. Thank you for the attention. Voila. <laughs> Thank you, Paolo. Very Welcome, Cheryl. Yeah. I, I had a question. I just wanted to ask you about the Please. Uh, Stefani News Agency um, mm -hmm. being the only news agency of Mussolini's regime. Was was that Mussolini's mouthpiece? Was it? Was that the idea? Sorry, was that was the was that particular news agency Mussolini's mouthpiece? The way that he disseminated what he wanted to go to, to exactly, yeah. exactly, mm. exactly. So it's I fully mean, fully controlled. <clears throat> You know, you know how it happens in in dictatorships. There, uh, there is just one source of uh, of the truth, and that's all. So whatever whatever the regimes want the people to know, or uh, the people or the society in general to know, that is published by this agency only by this agency. I mean, there is one truth which is uh, diffused by the, uh, by the chosen agency, the only agency that, that is at work under a dicta dictatorship. Mm, interesting. So if, anyone... there are, okay. if there are other questions, of course, I'm yeah. glad to, to answer. Well, well, the, the, there is a um, follow-up to this story, which I did not mention because I, I didn't want to make it um, too complicated, at least for the moment. But uh, one must consider that. First, um, you know how 
uh, it, it went uh, with with the Germans. First, they were allies, then became enemies when Italy um, signed the armistice. So, first of all, there were the Germans who, in any case, were apparently very interested, by the way, from the beginning in this case. So, um, there are news sent, uh, written by this anonymous sender who make state of a heavy interest by the Germans when, when they were friends and allies. Then you can imagine that once uh, the Germans became the enemy, very likely took whatever they want without any, uh, without asking any permission first. Then at, uh, after the end of the war, came the Americans, and very likely they raided uh, whatever was remained. So there is one thing to note, which is uh, to mention, which is uh, important. Uh, about 12 years ago, I think, in um, we had one uh, Congress, uh, UFO Congress in San Marino, and we had the participation of this gentleman, U.S. gentleman called Mr. Uh, Bill Brophy, Bravo Romeo Oscar Papa Hotel Yankee, Bill Brophy, who said, who said, my my daddy was um, a major, no, captain, major, or colonel, I don't know, in the U.S. Air Force, and he had the possibility of. Um, flying two coffins with, uh, with with bodies inside which were not not human, and and this gentleman also mentioned this uh, Bill Brophy also mentioned a book where uh, I think a French but. I think it was, who was um, the maximum authority in, 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 a given, in a specific area of pathology, was sure. had a possibility to examine and study bodies, two bodies of mm, non-human bodies, apparently of the Nordic kind, high, uh, tall, blonde, uh, white skin, white eyes, and and so on, and he found something um, interesting in, in the sense that uh, in these bodies the prevailing system was not the venous system but the lymphatic system, and so on. So, I mean, what uh, is interesting to mention at this point is that. Uh, the Americans should have somehow managed to get uh, uh, these uh, two bodies, which are claimed to be uh, from the um, 1933 crash in uh, Vergiate, close to Vergiate. So, these, these, this information indeed look uh, somehow connected, but the connection are not so strong, not so certain to say to tell for sure that it that it was really what happened. So that uh, after the, the, the that is that after the crash, not only debris but also bo two bodies were recovered that these two bodies were held uh, by the Italian um, by the Italian government and were studied as long uh, along with uh, with the uh, debris and so on and then somehow the um, at the end of the war uh, the americans took them and brought them of course, to, to the US to be studied. So, I mean, uh, I did not mention this because, of course, it would have been too long and complicated. But this is something to take into consideration. Of course, more research is needed. 
because there are also voices. Uh, I mean, there are voices, but I mean, more research is really, really necessary because there are voices that maybe Mussolini was... Um, uh, was convinced that these two pilots, of, of course, were German. So if Germany had this uh, uh, very advanced uh, weapons, uh, it, was, it was necessary to ally with Germany uh, in order to first not to have it as an enemy and then to win the war in a matter of weeks. So, uh, so uh, as you see, the, uh, as we have seen, there are ma many, many information relating to these stories, but most of them need to find, uh, um, how can I say, confirmation. And, and most of this information need to find a certain uh, correlation, a high degree of correlation, which for the moment is missing. In any case, Elizondo, yes, uh, I spoke with him many times, and he was, uh, and I also briefed him on this because he was very, very interested in this, uh, in this story, and um, I got some voices recently that uh, just today, Friday, uh, something important should be coming out from the U.S. So, um, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, take it <laughs> as face value at face value, uh, but stay stay in tune. I mean, uh, stay tuned on this because very likely today something important is going to come uh, to to come out from uh, from the U.S. concerning this matter of the 1933 Mussolini UFO case. <laughs> I don't. I, I cannot tell more. So I'm. I'm very curious myself because I was wondering what happened. Did did they, did they discover something that, that that we didn't know? I don't know. We will see. But again, stay stay tuned on this uh, on this uh, on this matter. Yes, there there are indeed there are voices that the Germans used used. Uh, uh, of course, for sure, they were doing researches on unconventional kind of weaponry, uh, especially flying weaponry. Th that, that is for sure. Uh, what did they manage to achieve? Well, that's not sure. Absolutely not sure, because there are many, many voices, you know, like the... Um, the production of the Haunebu models and so on, flying disc models, uh, Haunebu. Um, but I mean, also with, I, I did some research with my German ICER colleague, uh, Robert, uh, but he found, uh, really, he found nothing. Of, um, I mean, he, he, he's, he's in Germany. He was in Germany at the time. He's German himself. So he did uh, researches, but he said he did, did not find anything to, to um, corroborate these hypotheses of uh, uh, flying disks built by the Nazis. Uh, well, let's, um, okay, le now let's start speaking of Project Titan. Well, Project Titan, as it's uh, conceived, is um, a specifically a research initiative. So, um, it's not something for divulgation to, to the public. The, um, the aim of Project Titan is to create a truly international cooperative research effort on the UAP phenomenon. Uh, of course, it goes by itself that, it, that this is not going only to be international and cooperative, but also open, open because let us remember that the uh, phase of the secret uh, national base research on the UAP phenomenon should be over now because it led to nothing 
And if we want to really understand what the phenomenon is, what are uh, its purposes, if any, who is uh, beyond that, if, if anyone, and so on. If we want to really understand the what, what about the UAP phenomenon, it is necessary to act openly, internationally, cooperatively, and multidisciplinarily. <laughs> I managed to say that all in the sense that uh, the research that has to be brought on must be international because uh, it's like climate changes. There is no one single state which could do anything decisive in this respect. So this is why we had the Paris uh, conference that you uh, organized under the aegis of the UN because no one single state can do anything on the UAP phenomenon and on the climate changes itself. <clears throat> so again, I said, the research on the UFO phenomenon, if we really want to understand, to, 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 to unveil this phenomenon, must be, again, international, cooperative, open and multidisciplinary, necessarily. And so this is what uh, Project Titan is about. Uh, is about. Uh, so, Project Titan is meant to create an international uh, conference on the UAP research, so which is intended as a hub to um, stimulate the creation, uh, to facilitate the creation of this international effort. So uh, again, Ben, um, uh, this is not uh, a project aimed at the public, not directly aimed at the public, but it is a project aimed at stimulating, at posing the basis for the creation of this much needed international open uh, multidisciplinary research effort on the UAP phenomenon. What else can be done? Well, I think that if uh, Project Titan uh, succeeds in doing what it would like to do, that would be a great success already. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, just um, Ben, just to make it clear, this is going to be um, this is going. Uh, I mean, this initiative will be brought forward by the state of the, by the Republic of San Marino. Yep. San Marino is an incredibly tiny republic, <laughs> 35,000 people. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really minuscule, but it's one of the longest living democracies in the world, by the way, by any respect. So, I mean, in any case, what is important to this effort is that San Marino is a full UN full member state. Mm -hmm. So San Marino uh, sit along with China, India, Russia, US, Japan, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and can, like any other UN member state, present proposals, submit initiatives. So this Project Titan uh, provides that San Marino will submit a uh, um, proposal, a proposal, to the United Nations um, Secretary General Office. And this proposal will be, let us create within the UN uh, body, uh, the UN structure, let us create a, an office, a small office, nothing huge, which is meant, which will be tasked with the preparation of, uh, of this international uh, world conference on you on UAP research. So that's the that's the request that San Marino will uh, submit to the UN. If of course the UN agrees, of course um, there is a specific uh, roadmap to and the specific procedure because San Marino will present mid September this initiative. 
mm-hmm. around the um, end of November, around November, it will be assigned, this proposal will, will be assigned to a specific committee, UN committee for examination. Around December, likely, uh, this committee will meet to discuss this, um, this, this initiative, this proposal. If anything goes uh, as, it, as uh, we hope, uh, this proposal should be cleared by the examining committee and proposed for vote at the, U- at the UN General Assembly. Wow. So this is how think, things will go. I mean, the, it is a normal procedure for uh, any country which wants to submit any new idea. Of course, I mean, it, it, it's a, how can I say, um, a, general, a general normal procedure. So San Marino will do this. If the UN agrees and votes positively, then it will have to create this office and this office will create, will um, prepare the uh, World Conference will uh, choose the speakers, invite them, of course, choose the teams to be treated, of course, yeah. and, and it will prepare this um, conference and the uh, Republic of San Marino will take care of its practical implementation within its territory. Um, by the way, it is important to note that San Marino is a neutral country, and this is extremely important for this kind of initiative. If we really want to uh, facilitate a truly international cooperative effort, research effort, because of course you, you can understand that if the U.S. or China or India or Russia would uh, submit such a proposal. Very likely, it would gather the the, the 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 approval only from its friends. So, while San Marino in in itself is a neutral country, and this is bodes very well for this international level uh, cooperation. For the moment, uh, I can only tell you that I will take part in the seventh uh, World Ufological Congress in Barcelona which is going to be in end of September. This is the most important uh, event uh, I, I, I will take part into. Let us always remember that we are speaking of a subject that we know in a very, very, very small part, just it's the tip of the iceberg that we are speaking about. And for sure, for sure, there are there are many, many, uh, how can I say, flows of information, um, how can I say, talks, uh, which, which are happening, I mean, behind, behind the, the scene, exchange of information, uh, congresses. Uh, I mean, we know so little of the whole story that some, t- I mean, also myself, I think I know everything about the situation. No, no, no. From time to time, I have to to <laughs> to sit with myself <laughs> in a meeting with myself and say, "No, listen. Don't think that you have the situation in hand that you know everything. Not at all. Not at all." In any case, uh, I, I, Isaiah, I agree that. Uh, until now, the U.S. managed to have uh, a leading, leading for the good, leading for the bad role in the whole UAP subject. But it is slowly, slowly changing, as you can see. The, and as we have said, this this uh, Project Titan initiative could be one of the first, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, part of the dam which is popping out all of all of a sudden, and I hope and I really hope that this will be 
the the effect. I, I mean, starting to to disaggregate this this dam until it falls down completely. Well, uh, at uh, ICER level, uh, yes, of course, we have tried to do an assessment of the. Um, of what could be uh, the the outcome, or in any case, the prevailing attitude on this request, but of course, this was not that much more uh, than educated guessing. I mean, or after all, uh, we came to the broad agreement that if if we get a uh, fifty fifty. Uh, attitude that would be would be something because nowadays nowadays you cannot uh, take for sure that go uh, all government are interested in this UAP subject uh, some could be of course it's not like 1978 anymore where whereby especially the UK wanted to play down as much as possible the whole initiative. No, nowadays it's going to be a different story uh, by far. But I mean, I don't think that uh, we will have 90% uh, positive and 10% negative. No, I mean, if we have 50, 50 positive and 50 negative, that, that, that would be something. Uh, we are now speaking as um, ufologists, interest people, sincerely interested, interested people. But these gentlemen are going to treat this matter as an ordinary matter like, like many other that, that they are dealing with uh, every day. So... <laughs> That's the point, and we have a, a, we on the ufologist side. We we're going to have practically no control on this. We can only hope to build everything correctly from the beginning, so that everything is uh, how can I say put into the proper track from the beginning, and that's it. How can I say? I mean, I've always been. You know what? I've always been. Uh, fascinated by knowing how the universe how the universe works in general then I was always um, unhappy with the answers that were provided to me basically by religion basically by science because you know what uh, mm, until um, some centuries before uh, those who explained to you how the universe works were the church were the priests so to speak no now things the uh, things have changed and science as it is intended today me deterministic mechanical so orient oriented science positivistic science i mean is what uh, is meant to explain to you the the world, so to speak. And I was never happy in, in, with the, with science and with as well as with religion. So I always wanted to try to 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 my to 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 I mean scratch the reality, scratch the appearances myself. Slowly, slowly, but surely, of course, with the intellectual elements at my disposal, of course, which are which are not mm -hmm. highly specialized in any kind, but um, in any case, I, I say that I have a brain and I like to use it <laughs> <laughs> to, to, in a better possible way. So this is what, so I mean, it's something that, oh, um, it's not that, I mean, one day I was going to Damascus <laughs> and fell from, from the horse. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's something that I always had uh, um, a feeling that I always had here with me from the very beginning. So 
this is why I'm, I mean, I'm not only interested in UFOs, but also in many other things like, uh, for instance, um, uh, shamanism. For instance, mm -hmm. this is something which is very interesting to me. Uh, I practice Reiki also. I'm a Reiki practitioner, um, and and I'm I'm doing a lot of research also on matters like uh, the near death experiences, uh, OBE, out of body experiences, uh, pre premonitions. Uh, life after life, uh, blah blah blah, and so on. So you see, this is a. I mean, I have a lot of interest interests for everything which is mysterious, which is labeled as mysterious, but which, according to me, can help us explain the true nature of the universe. By the way, yes, uh, concerning the role of Elizondo. Uh, in in the project, I can tell you this: um, he has no no official active role in this, but I mean I can tell you, as the one who has created Project Titan and is managing it on behalf of the Kun and of Iser. Uh, so I can tell you that Elizondo has never had any official role in this. But of course, I mean, it has happened because I spoke with him many times. He has, he, he gave me some good hints, some good uh, advice. So, I mean, again, not a formal official role at all. But I mean, he has been always interested, sincerely interested in because it is a project which goes in the direction of the internationalization of the uh, discussion on UAP. In many cases, there are many cases of uh, close, in, um, close encounters. There are um, alterations uh, in the witness uh, perception. I mean, the sense yeah. of reality of witnesses often, uh, often fades, changes. I mean, there are um, te telepathic uh, conversations with beings. There are beings which appear to be um, non-physical, or I mean, there can be so many disruptions in the sense of reality, which uh, have the effect, of course, of a great confusion, of creating a huge confusion in the witness, first of all, and then uh, the problem is that most, in most of the cases, what you can recall to your ordinary mind is minimum, minimal. The main problem with the most of, uh, of the people who are uh, subject to this effect of uh, close encounters and uh, this weird effect were noted also by military pilots because there were there, there was mention of alterations in the sense of uh, reality which pilots who came close to UAPs experienced and this was i think in uh, it was meant now i don't remember do not remember exactly who mentioned this or where this was mentioned but i think it was in a report by the uh, uh, us uap task force if you remember uh, i mean uh, i pointed this out to you just to make you understand that it's not just a fancy effect that uh, some fancy people experience every now and then because they are fancy no no <laughs> not at all i mean it's something which uh, the 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 cases of uh, close encounters w with this kind of alterations are many. There are many many cases. I mean, you, it's not you who are who are a bit of uh, out of uh, <laughs> your your brain does not work properly. No, no, absolutely, absolutely not. And also, by the way, I don't know, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if you are aware also uh, animals are 
known to react uh, very in intensely to the presence of UAPs. In most of the cases, they get fri they, they get really frightened. Uh, in most of the cases, but in any case, animals also do react to UAP close presence. When uh, when you go on with life and reach a certain age, then the the big big question of what uh, my life is not going to last that long anymore. So what happens then? What happens later? <laughs> this is something which is. Uh, I mean, at a certain age, becomes uh, an important question. I mean, at least this is what happened to me. So I did. I started doing a lot of research on the so-called reincarnation, and also, also on, on of course, also on OBE, on, on the out-of-body experiences. Uh, it's it's a bit difficult to to. To say that in a nutshell, but in any case, Ben, I can tell you this. Judging by what I've done, by the researches I've done, <clears throat> I came to the conclusion that uh, the so-called reincarnation is um, pretty much like, li li like it is. I mean, it works like that, actually, in the sense that we are, um, we are not physical beings who sometimes have spiritual desires, but we are spiritual creators who, for a certain time, uh, live in a physical world. So that's the point. I mean, uh, by the way, I'm not religious at all, uh, but I'm very much interested into spiritual values. So this is important to mention. So um, it looks to me that, I mean, now I cannot go into details because we, we could stay here talking for uh, until tomorrow night. But in any case, I also had some personal experiences of my own uh, where I confirmed, I, I had the confirmation that indeed, indeed there are uh, past lives. And also in, the, also in this case, hypno hypnosis plays a very important role as a, a tool which can help you overcome the limitations posed by, by our um, ordinary mind, because it's our ordinary minds which blocks us, which prevents us from remembering who we were and from getting information in a non-linear way and <clears throat> in a non-physical way. So doing through hyp hypnosis, you can do a lot of uh, research and find also out. I mean, I don't know, Ben, if you had uh, never uh, read anything on this, but uh, all the authors confirm that it's very si simple through hypnosis to go back to um, precedent, precedent lives and 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 also what is interesting is that you can find a, a fil rouge come on the um, say light no not not light motive but from one life to the other you find connection you find purposes it's not just that through through hypnosis you just oh, dream dream uh, also um, something like uh, do dreams or um, mention things out of um, any meaning no no not at all not at all Hyp uh, reg hypnotical regression to past lives can also be very very useful in um, solving problems which apparently do not have any explanation i mean <clears throat> Because the, the matter is that when you have big problems, very likely they tend to represent themselves life after life until, until you find a way to get rid of it, basically. So it's like it's, it's the principle of psychoanalysis, which is basically functions very well 
but extend it to other lives. I mean, you see? So uh, in any case, uh, my opinion, after doing a lot of research, after doing a lot of uh, reading, and also um, psychological um, hypnotic hypnotic regressions myself is that indeed things work like that we are soul uh, in the sense that our essence our real essence is not physical who choose from time to time to do um, an experience in this physical dimension. So we get a body, so we get all what is connected with the body, I mean, muscular system, blood system, lymphatic system, uh, uh, brain with nervous system, and skeleton, and whatever is needed for us to work in this physical, um, in this physical uh, dimension. Uh, I call it dimension for a lack of better word, but I think you understand. Yeah. Concerning the OBE, OBE is extremely interesting as well. And, and to put it simply, it's, it's for me, it's one of the capacity capacities that the human being has naturally. I mean, it's nothing so special. Of course, like any capacity, I mean, there is someone who is better at and someone who is not so good at, at that. For instance, I, I can draw, of course, uh, I, I can make simple sketches and so on. My opinion is that our background, no, not background, our essence uh, of human beings, our uh, the human being in general has a lot of unused capacities. Uh, these unused capacities are normally referred to as um, uh, ESP, extrasensorial perception. Yeah. But to me, it's rather, I mean, it's something that, that each one of us has, at least, at least, I mean, um, in, a, in a basic form at least in a basic form, in the sense that also, I told you I'm a Reiki practitioner also. It's the same job. It's the same consideration. I think that each one of us has the basic capacity of giving uh, energy through the ends, I, I think. But someone is better naturally at that. Someone is not so good at that. But if you exercise, and I can... I can confirm this personally. Yeah. If you do exercise, you get better all the time. Exercise makes you better in any case. So, I mean, OBE, like uh, Reiki, like te telepathy, and so on, is um, one of the functions that we have basically mm, from, from our birth, but that we do not normally use. So this is the, my my website. Uh, here on the left, you have this uh, uh, these drawers. You see, uh, yeah. most of these are documents that I have translate translated into Italian. So unless you understand currently Italian, it will not be of any interest to you. The most interesting thing for you uh, is this small drawer here block when you click it you have it can you see that you can see that the first article is project titan history is made so if you just take a look at this article you will have a lot of uh, information I tried to make uh, a, an article which is fully info fully and informative and correctly informative on the project, uh, its genesis, how it was uh, uh, brought on. Uh, I post articles on the development of Project Titan. So if you want to stay in touch, please mm -hmm. 
uh, note this uh, note this blog address and, and follow it from time to time. Also, so this is my uh, uh, Twitter account where I published any news or things of uh, interest that I mean uh, that I uh, that I deem important or interesting in the ufological research. Thank you. Thanks Thank you very much, free. everybody. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 Bye-bye.